And as we do hop in, you know, first things first. How are we feeling about the deli on... Wait. Did we get... This is a lie. This isn't Dry Arabia. Yeah, we've been lied to. <laughs> this is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Lipany. And there was someone on the chat that asked about this one, and now we know for sure. Indeed, it's Lipany. Once again, as we talked about this with Hillandale, this is a new version of Lipany. Once again, big shout out goes to Bitterlin, the mapper who fixed the build in Lipany. This, mm -hmm. as much as I was told, is a much more consistent and much more reliable version of Lipany. So you won't see the massive inconsistencies that the built in Lipany generation has when it comes to either massive cliff spawning or nothing. So you do have a much more consistent map generation with a more fair resource distribution as well. Once again, big shout out goes to Bitterlane for working behind the scenes on this one. It is the usual Lipany that players are so used to, but in a much yeah. more balanced and much more fair and esport ready way. TLDR, instead of getting tree dry Arabia or really thin French pass, you actually get Lipany. Right? That, that's what we're kind of looking at. Like there was a lot of inconsistencies with the spawns. I think some some wild ones more recently had players spawning right next to each other, which was just nutty. <laughs> um, so I'm really glad that we kind of like helped alleviate that pressure. Relic are very busy right now. They're trying to make the Ottomans. It's not easy to <laughs> train a man to sit on the back of a camel and, and bongo bongo as he goes along with drums. If you try it, guys, try doing drums on horseback. It's not easy. So we're here to help out with that. And this does look more healthy, a lot more healthy, right? Like look at this generation of Lipany. It looks pretty fair. Um, maybe the sacred site's a little bit skewed, but they're within like tolerance range, I'd say. Like this is a decent game for the Delhi to play on this map. You're saying that, but where is the third sacred site at? Did I miss it? it? There's two next to each other and then one on the southeast. So you can see Cap yeah. still in the same way. He's like, oh, there <laughs> they are. Oh. <laughs> uh, pause. Okay, th yeah, there it is. Yes. One of them is just sneaking in that corner right next to the board and the relic. That's a pretty juicy spot to deny for Winchester, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I think like one of the standardized things you're looking for like with the Delhi is do I get two sacred sites close together and is it around a choke point? Well, bad news for Kapoch in this generation. The two are somewhat together, not as much as we're used to seeing, but they're in the opening. I don't know if this is going to be a more standardized thing for Lipany, but like the default one has a tendency to put two sacred sites more or less on the same screen with tree lines or mountain passes to defend them. In this situation, it's done the absolute opposite. And that part of the map is going to have a massive importance. If you take a look at the gold mine spawns, especially with one French player on the board, most of the small gold mines on the map are spawning in that direction. So you get the feel that this northern side is going to have a massively inflated importance as compared to the southern part of the map in the early game, at least. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm going to be looking towards, you know, is there any kind of potential to go into a ball play? Some civs like to do it. I don't expect the French to. I also wouldn't expect Vinces to do because I think, like, I, I, I believe... That when it comes to ball plays, it's what I call like an advanced strategy, right? It's it's something that you do after you've practiced a lot of AOE and four. That's not to say Vinchester isn't capable of that level of play. It's just if you know if you think about the limited time he's had to play the game right now, he probably hasn't spent a lot of time doing these kind of proxy bases on top of balls. And on top of that, the French do that even less. Look at the amazing learn though. Winchester going for a second oh. town center over here. We talked about this one in the previous set that we cast between Winchester and Good Game that he decided not to go for that. And it remains to be seen whether that was in quotation marks conscious and he just knew that he was going to win with simple micro and one TC build. So he was sort of trying to hide this build or whether that was really just a strategy that he thought is the most optimal and only realized later on that a two TC build is what we really consider meta nowadays. Yeah, there's like that trick when you're playing a bunch of chess pros. Just use the strategy of the last play, like play five at once and then use their strategies against each other. <laughs> uh, the only problem with that thought process, Lytical, is you just beat the strategy, right? So um, Winchester has to have someone else in mind because if he's just copy and paste in good games build, yeah, good, good game did lose that game. <laughs> well, the good game was called, that is true. Barracks opening true. for Kaposhi quite early, actually. That is a darkish barracks still. Yeah, because it, when you're playing the Delhi, like if you think of pretty much all the builds, I say 80% of the builds that Delhi do involve spears, right? Like it's, it's just kind of a given. You could go for horsemen, but you're playing against the French. So I think it's just willing to kind of like wave the white flag there. Maybe a missed opportunity here, because like, I, I think it's actually somewhat credible now. No tower victory. I think actually this is one of the sieves where it's not a bad choice to go for uh, in conjunction with archers, just to counter out your opponent's archers. Because you know you're going to have spears either way. And you can try to amass horsemen, but Looking at the generation, I'm a bit concerned about how easily accessible a lot of these resources are going to be. 
The other thing to consider with this generation is look at the Stealth Forest in front of the base of Kaposh here. That is a prime oh, spot for Vinch yeah. to hide a scout in. And that is exactly what he needs, that vision onto Kaposh's base to chip away with the villager every once in a while. This could be a juicy, juicy spot to hide a scout in. I'm trying to think how many like berries typically spawn on Lipany. I think it's 10, right? Yeah, should be 10 patches. I think we got nine. Am I blind? No, 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 no. I'm an idiot. We got 10. Yeah, we got 10. It's the one in his base. I, like, it's so saturated <laughs> because all the people are om nomming it. So actually, yeah, Kapoch is pretty good with his berry sources. I would love to like see a secondary TC play. I think that's actually a good way for the daily to go. It's just given this open layout around your north and south side, it doesn't look open, but it is when you want to expand into it. I've got this weird feeling that he's just not going to go for an eco-op and instead he's just going to react to what Vinchester does. Yeah, I have the same feeling over here because for now he's going to be the player reactionary here as the knight charges in here. Might actually chip away with the villager, gets the charge, needs a second hit. Look at that block out there for Vinch. He is definitely crafty over here. Gets the kill. What? what? Nope, no, no kill. No, 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 it... <laughs> so, so textiles will make a lot of sense to the deli, but also keep in mind, you know, in general, like you won't get into that early blacksmith so you can. He's, come, he's being teased for it, man. He'll get the kill. But the thing to keep in mind is you just lost a knight for a villager. We said this last game. That is not a good trade. Not a good trade at all. And yeah, I was surprised because there were three hits on that villager and I was like, wait a second, did Kaposh get the text was so early and he did so, uh-oh, Spearman did. coming in here. It's gonna be a little Hello. annoying. Oh, it, it, more than a little bit annoying. You might be able to snipe a villager, but oh, the pathfinding Kaposh, come on, don't do this to yourself. He'll get a free villager. He no reaction, actually. One, actually. I mean, there's nothing you can react to to this. You just have to finish the build. You can pull back like um, you this, can run, but overall, yeah, yeah you, you just have to rush the build up. I think... In Vinchester's mind, he was like, there's no way two spears kill a villager before I finish. Well, he just learned another lesson today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Loses one villager out there. Not going to be the end of the world, but still something that's going to decrease his efficiency. And look at that. He's going to try to match the spears with his own spears. Oh no God, archer so play this time around. It's one spearman. You shouldn't like, you should just like be able to shrug at this, but he actually will be forced to idle villagers because of the build up into his own spears and knights is delayed, right? Like, in fact, I don't think he's even building more knights right now because this in the spears, he just stopped, which feels a bit funky. I'm glad he queued more because I, I think even if you're up against spears, you want to go up to two free knights at least so you can try to chip away at Eco. Yeah, you, you have that feeling that he's just stopping military production altogether. He's lacking food here, and it's getting alarming because Kaposh is in a full military build-up. Look at that. Yeah. Eight spearmen already, two horsemen as well, and this gold mine is more than exposed. It's not just that. It's the five scholars already, and more coming. So they're going to be tanky. They're going to heal any damage done. Like, there's more efficiency coming out for Kapoch. Vinchester is going to get more value out of his build three, four minutes down the line. But it almost feels like Kapoch saw this secondary TC play. He's like, that's greedy, and I can punish that. And now he's turning the screws. He's moving out for Sacred Sight Control. He's like to cap at least two of these for free. That gold trickle isn't about a quick tech up, by the way. It's about trading it back into food and wood to keep the war machine turning. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's something that he can consider, but I, I also think that Kaposh could also think about Castle Age and just capitalize on the map control using the relics. Ooh, Knight coming in here. Might actually get a kill. He's, no, yeah. Nope, nope, nope. In his dreams, maybe. Like, you, know, you know when you kind of like, you know that kind of thing they tell the snipers, like visualize the kill type thing, right? That's what the knight was doing there, but that was, he was visualizing delusion. That's a 130 health unit. Even with one knight, if there's two of those Healy boys around, you're not doing any damage. Uh, one can dream, right? As you said, Kaposh can decide between two things here. He can just trade the gold he has into full food and wood and just fuel that war machine over on Winchester, who is desperately low on army numbers, or could even consider going into Castle Age, pick up the relics. You get the feel that full army here pays off a little bit better because he sees the blood in the water. There is nothing on the field for Vinch that really can stop this. And I just love the horsemen. The horsemen are about body blocking and sniping. You see that exactly there. They're able to finish off with the spearmen start, but could not finish themselves. And I think the double down makes a lot of sense here. Like it's going to be prolonged feudal either way. You're getting all this gold trickle. The idea of castle is romanticized way too much in this matchup. Massing spears and horsemen to counter out anything the French can do right now is better than you giving them breathing room, especially on a two TC build, going up to castle yourself for what? Men at arms? Men at arms are still going to lose to knights for the first five minutes of castle. This is a much better approach. And look at that, three sacred sites already under the control of Kaposh over here. One might get decapped here, but the key thing is the gold income, as you said. He doesn't need to win this game with the sacred site countdown. He just needs to make it work for the gold income. 
even better if he can chip away with a couple of villagers being picked off by the horsemen. Really good game so far by Kaposh. He really feels like he's in firm command of this game. What? Hello? <laughs> oh, uh, whoops. Yeah, because, you know, like, apparently when you take a dead tree and plant it next to a, a living tree, they get confused on whether they are family or not. <laughs> so they are not family in this situation, which is why there's a clear gap. Well, not clear, but there is a gap there that they're able to merge through. So decap will happen on the south side. Kind of interesting that Vinchester's fixated on this sacred site. I'd actually say he's contesting the worst sacred site available to him. The two in the north make a lot more sense, but I think he's threatened by the numbers that Kapoch has shown in the field. Yeah, I think so as well. He knows that the army is on the north, and he knows that he can't take that fight, so he's just trying to decap this, but the consequence of that is that Kaposh maintains control over both sacred sites on the north, and he's gonna cap this one as well. Whereas for Vinge, he's just struggling for map control right now, and he's playing a very much reactionary game in a game where Kaposh is now flirting with the idea of going into Castle. Yeah, and, and that's fine, but like I still think that this goal could be better leveraged, right? Like you can still think about castle, but yeah, there it is. I think the marketplace is coming up now. You, you should be trading. He's got almost a thousand gold. This is the logic I was talking about. Like you should be able to afford additional while still saving enough for castle. And we can see that is very apparent by the fact that he's got a thousand gold, but the food <laughs> is nowhere near. Well, his food income is nothing to complain about. It's a thousand food per minute, so. He could still squeeze out Castle but as you said, he probably wants to trade over here. And on the oh, other husband. side, look oh, at that. Oh, that's a pinch. That body blocked out as well. And the spin in the meantime is distracting Vinchester. I don't think he's tracking all these Ooh. fights. He'll react finally, uh -oh. but three or four villagers going down here. No gold being gathered in a situation where Vinchester needs any and all gold he can get. He hasn't even got the blacksmiths yet. So Lidicor, in a prolonged feudal, he can't look towards the blacksmith upgrades that Kapoch already has unlocked all of. It's even worse than that because you're talking about the prolonged feudal, but who wants to stay in feudal if you're Kaposh? He's going into Castle Age, he's got a larger army than his opponent, and he's going to beat him to Castle by a massive margin. Winchester does have a slight eco lead, but all of that is being offset by the Sacred Sites, and... I don't know, like, I'm just struggling to see Winchester's win condition right now, because all he can do is just keep spamming spears, and his army is just lackluster at best. I think his win condition lies in game number two. I mean, this is feeling a bit short. Once that tech up comes out, Vinchester has three minutes to have an impact. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult because that's when the men at arms come out, which I said, Knight's one-on-one -on -one beat, but you're not going to be in a one-on-one -on -one engagement. That extra gold trickle that's coming from these sacred sites has added up quickly, especially when you consider Vinchester. You know, 14 villages ahead sounds good, but Kapoch is neck and neck because of these sacred sites. On top of that, he's going to gather the relics afterwards, which is going to be him even further ahead. And look at that. A knight had to be traded off for a scholar once oh. again. Inefficient trade over here for Vinchester. He's just forcing himself into these very difficult situations because it's not like he has a choice, right? Uh, I mean, the, you, the, there are some choices, but none of them feel good. I mean, look at the choices he's making right now. He's going for castle. He's been to the punchline. He saved up himself. But when he gets there, what do you really have? Think about what the French do in Castle Age Lytical. They don't build spears. They build Arbor Latria. They double down on their knights. And yet, the vast quantity of his army is spears. Sometimes it's a good position to find yourself in the French. But in this situation, he doesn't have a way of leveraging that into a push at the beginning of Castle. Instead, this is a defensive spear ball. Yeah, I, I really feel like right now, Winchester is just gambling on the fact that Kaposh makes a mistake. He really feels like he's trying to play for the long game, and I don't even really think it's a bad idea. Because, no. like, what other choice he has? He can't win a fight right now, and he kind of needs to, so... He can just hope his opponent makes a mistake, and he can drag this out to a long game. Sniper Villager, but that'll be all we get here. And, and something to keep in mind is Relics are now being gathered up by Kapoch. Something he maybe could optimize for is peeling his Scholars off earlier to go towards those Relics. He had a lot of them floating in the midfield doing nothing. So he could have got a better game there. He might find himself more contested. However, right now, Vinchester only has three Knights and they're all in one location. It means it should be feasible to somewhat sneak out and get majority Relic control for the Delhi. And it looks like Kaposh is working towards that indeed, while also maintaining control over all three sacred uh -oh. sites, actually. One of them might be decapped, but... To be honest, this is actually not as bad for Vinchester as it originally looks. He's buying himself a lot of time, and... As long as he's able to keep Kaposh inside his base, there is a glimpse oh, of fine. hope here. Uh-oh. Run, Vinchester. It's a bait. It's a bait. Don't <gasps> take that fight at all. Meanwhile, on the north side, he's distracted by the south. He runs away because of this. The wall law's being primed. What a maneuver out of Kaposh. I love that choice to just run at him. Because he sees there's not enough archers to kill off a scholar. Indeed, he just rushed them. On the northern side, Kaposh lost track of the horsemen, though, loses a couple. 
but the elephants are now making an appearance. Crossbow's being added as well. This is a good fight on the other hand for Winchester, actually. Hey, it's not many archers though, right? And it's, it's just the elephants on the way. So this is a trade out that Kapoch wants to take because once this dense army's gone, the elephant's not counted. Like, look at the spearman count right now. It's about to go down to single digits just as the first elephant is going to arrive in your vision. At least he's doing a good job decapping the sacred sites. And keep in mind, if he can maintain those sacred sites neutral, there's a chance here. He's up by 20 eco. I don't think the situation is as grim as it could possibly be for Vingister. He's still in a tough spot, but it actually is looking better and better for him. It's the hidden info that I'm a bit worried about. I mean, Kapoch, this is a free point transition. The elephants come out, Vinchester just saw them. So he's likely to react to that. If he reacts to that, he's not going to be prepared for the two next layers, which is crossbows and lances. Keep in mind that home blades hasn't actually been researched yet. It's underway about a minute and a half out. Once that happens, I think that's where Kapoch wants to fight. Vinchester, he needs to sniff this out. If he can actually get some info, he's going to be in good position to get a reaction. However, if he remains lackluster in his scouting for the next three minutes, I do think that Kapoch is going to take a critical fight around that sacred site on the east side. Uh, good raids coming in here for Vinchester. Oh. He's setting himself up well here. Quite a few villagers being picked off, but as you said, he That's needs to win a critical fight. Oh, look at that. that Great it's value, actually. It's the info. It's the info, Lytical. He's killing villagers, and he's <gasps> got so much info. The Lancer shop in his base, but only two of them. He knows about the crossbowmen, so now Vinchester should know that the one two punch is just to go into Knights and Arbor the Trie to overwhelm the Delhi. Yeah, but behind this one, he's also losing Eco, and you see Kaposh is turning on the screws, getting closer oh. and closer to the key drop as well. Uh -oh. Luckily, he's got gold back in his base. He's still tapping away up, but the elephant is coming in. Headbutting into the defenses, and the guild hall is on the front line here. So long term might be a little bit of risk. And Kapoch, he goes for the two-pronged assault, heads north to recap those sacred sites so that he can push out more units for the main battle. But for now, one elephant will be enough due to the amount of scholars there. Yeah, that's quite a lot of scholars out there, and sniping them is just going to be a distant dream right now for Vinch. 14 army against 40 out there. Almost triple the numbers for Kaposh. Oh, God. I, so something we haven't talked about is the fact that Vinches is stuck in a farm transition, and you can see the impact on his food. He can't afford Arbor the Trier. He can't afford anything but a few archers right now. Look at his production, and then look at Kapoch's. Look at Vinchester's, and then try not to scream. Oh, my goodness. Raids are also so good for Kaposh oh over here. Cutting into that eco deficit so well. I honestly, I feel like it's one of those moments if you just cover Vinchester's production, you're like, ah. And then you take your hand away, like, ah! And then you cover, ah, <laughs> ah! Uh, like, it doesn't look good for him right now. Look at the military pop cap on both sides, and then look at what's coming the next minute. Vin, he needs the farms online, and Kapoch, because he transitioned in Lancers, he can just roleplay the French and dive into your base. And look at the EFCO deficit. Second TC now being added for Kaposh. All the eco lead that Winchester has built is going to disappear oh. in the moment. And then the relics on top of it mean that Kapoch is already ahead. Right, that, that, that's the thing. And also he's ahead in the important resource here, which is food. Look at Winchester and what's getting low. It's wood. His economy is deceptive. It's about 50 to 60% as efficient as it should be because he's having to convert all this wood into farms. It's a delayed investment and you need to return your investment right now. Like if your stocks are down 40%, the house is on fire, buddy. Take it out and buy fire insurance. Oh man, it's not only the house being on fire, it's gonna be a tower as well, being denied. Winchester being cut off from this precious gold mine as well. And look at the stone count for Kaposh. It just dropped because there's a key being dropped right next to another gold mine out there. Spectacular position for Kaposh, pinning Winchester inside his base should that castle get completed. And that's part of the way that he gets his insurance. He needs Arbor the Trier. Right now, it's still only one elephant. It seems like Arbor the Trier are bad because of the nerfs towards their damage directly towards elephants, but there's only one elephant here. Most of Kapoch's army can be counted out by a massive Arbor the Trier due to the fact there's heavily armored units, as well as the fact that these Arbor the Trier can drop their shields to trade out on ranged. But right now, you're trading with the worst unit possible and ignoring the one you counter. Once again, Kapoch goes in. He strikes onto the wood line, and Vinchester is now behind Nicole economy behind in score he waves the white flag and Kapoch goes one game up great game out here for Kapoch and Winchester he played a different style of French that he has played in the first game much less aggressive much less map control focus and it showed he forfeits so much map control for Kaposh at the beginning of the game that Kaposh could get away with three sacred sites and off the back of that, nail a better castle age timing, leverage the relics and from that point on just play from a momentum advantage.
forced Winchester essentially to try and catch up in cost leech timing, but that's not something that Winchester's eco was sufficient to handle. Yeah, and, and the thing, that the kind of <laughs> statement for the game, I don't know if that's a thing, but we'll make it a thing, is information overload, or lack of, right? Is that you have this situation where Winchester is playing on limited vision, but also Kapoch has designed his transitions to overwhelm you. We saw the elephant into the lances, into the crossbows. Like he's always trying to step two steps ahead to ensure that the French can't transition first. It's actually a really crafty way for Kapoch to play this matchup because if you do unlock castle first with limited pressure on your eco, you can be this many steps ahead into game two with Kapoch already on match point. Indeed, Kapoch on a match point over here in a Chinese versus Mongols matchup on a brand new map that we know for a long, long time, actually. Hill and Dale, but a new and rebalanced version, something that's much more suitable for competitive play. And look at that map generation. It is just beautiful. Relic spawns, very even. Forest spawns looking cool as well. And you get the feel that this Dale area is not empty, unlike we so commonly see from the one version of Hill and Dale that's in the ranked map pool. Or is it in the ranked map pool, actually? Or is it taken out, even? I, have to remember. I think it is back in there, I think. I might be wrong on that though. I know they added a bunch back in, right, with the with like the last patch, so it's probably back in uh, rotation. I think they also added a bunch in the quick match. I, I believe Mega Random got added into the quick match. So there you go, guys. Who you, plays quick we'll, match we'll though? <laughs> that's true. Uh, pe people who got really shiny emblems and don't want to lose them. I think that's usually the people who get a quick match. I thought they just but used Smurfs for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, wait, no, no. See, because that, that's a pro-level trick, Lytical, okay? Pros know that they can do that for a dollar. But, like, us average people, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. A dollar? Dude, I could get, like, I don't know, Klondike bar for that. I think you might uh, be able to do it for free, even with family sharing. True. See, there you go. That's why I'm not a pro, because I haven't figured out family sharing. <laughs> Uh, Kaposh rolling out with the gear out there. Whoop whoop. A bit of an extra scouting for him. Deciding to go with the barracks. So good old fashioned Mongol tower rush here coming from Kaposh. Winchester does have two scouts out there. So he should have his eyes set on this very soon. And he should have a confirmation that this is coming his way. Mm -hmm. Something that I do want to highlight about these, uh, <laughs> these tree lines is that Winchester's game could get very uncomfortable very quickly. He got two close spawning wood lines. If Kapoch did want to go for an aggressive outpost between those two, oh my god, would this game get uncomfortable quickly for the Chinese. The other concern is, look at the food spot for Winchester. That is where he has placed his mill. It is also on the front. Could also easily get tower rushed. And then yeah. it's one of the more vulnerable spots the Chinese oh, have, god. your food eco. Look at that. You're right, that's even better, actually, because it's not just about the food. Notice what's next to that berry patch. It's the stone, the stone that he'll need for a secondary TC. So if you just outpost block over there and then maybe wrap a second one near the tree lines, like the immense value you get out of two outposts there is so criminal in this game. Exactly. And obviously you can relocate your food eco if you're Winchester, but we're talking about this one. Here your goal with the Mongols is not to finish off your opponent, it's to delay him and you really get the feel that the delay potential here for Kaposh is massive with how favorable tower positions he could possibly have. Yeah, we'll see which one he wants to go for. He's actually going to be very kind of tame about this. Surprised he didn't wrap east side, but I think the logic here is if he did go for the stone coverage, he wouldn't be able to cover the wood because his spearman would have to run all the way back and forth. This way you get kind of a feasible distance between outpost one and outpost two. But this first one's going to be an annoyance. Like it should block out some of the sheep some of the berries, and I think it will just reach onto the east side of that mill, or at least it definitely will when he gets iris lets. Uh, counter tower coming in here for Winchester. Chinese builders building faster, and look at that. He was expecting this tower rush, and his response is going to be swift. This tower from Kaposh might not even go up. It's very difficult now, right? With only 750 health, taking 50% more damage from torches in build-up. Outposts can die fast, and with the reactionary outpost, like, it's either you get torched down, you get blocked out. This is one of the big advantages to the Chinese, of course. With a superior build speed, you can't match them easily. And now, Kapoch will wrap around. Now, keep in mind, if he forces another outpost, another two, in fact, it's actually still not a bad investment of Kapoch's time. But he needs to force that outpost investment. And instead, Winchester realizes, actually, if I do just walk out straight away, your structures go bye-bye. Yeah, I need a nice micro out there. Oh my god, he's recommitted. <laughs> now, I, if I'm Vin, I just like burn this again. It's still worth it over chopping this much wood. 
But yeah. Seuss is going to allow instead. He's dropping, I think it was Imperial Academy that he's going yeah, with, so no Barbican. He's going to pull the boys oh. again. Here they come. This time a little bit further out and a little bit more delayed. So you might lose a villager for this. However, he's baiting him into TC range. And remember these TCs, they have hand cannon in it. So 25 damage per shot. Spinman do not last long against that. One villager will go down, possibly a second as well. But it looks like he just has to commit to torching this down. You can't really walk away anymore. And that Khan fish him off in the exit makes it even worse. So probably three, possibly four villagers going down. Just imagine if Vinchester had built the outpost straight away instead. Exactly, or if he had two more villagers, because that was really the difference maker. Loses oh. quite a few in the process, might actually even allow that tower to go up. His own tower seems a little too late to this. So many villagers dying for this. Now Kapoch, three villagers ahead. Vinchester, it feels like he's in experimentation mode. It feels like he's in college. He's not quite sure what he wants to try right now. You know, he goes in for the villager pool, then he goes back for the outpost. But by doing so, you've got half value out of both. And now, what do you do? Idle five villagers inside here? Meanwhile, Kapoch has an entire economy working. Minus one villager that's building up outpost on the front side. Oh, the value now is great for Kapoch. It is just yes. massive. You see, the feudal age times will not even be that different. So Kaposh, he himself wasn't really slowed down by this, whereas Winchester was. And as you said, he's down by two villagers. He's going to be able to recover with that, but it's going to take time, valuable time that Kaposh was able to gain with this. And that just feels weird, right? Like the Mongols being that close to your timing isn't something we typically see. Usually they're maybe 30 seconds, minute behind at least, but this feels really tight in comparison. Like maybe 20 seconds overall, like maybe close to that 30, but... Nowhere near where it should be, especially when you consider how this outpost rush began for Kapoch with an absolute fail on that berry patch. And the idle time is massive. As you said, five villagers idled non-stop for Winchester inside the tower. The eco oh, impact yeah. of this one is massive. God. Right now, I have to wonder what the plan is for Winchester moving forward because this is where it gets a little bit dicey on that slowdown as you move up into tech two. What are your options? What are you looking towards? I don't think you can afford to not field units. If you play a greedy castle up, build with the Chinese, I'm question marking where you're getting value or what you're doing. You need to choose a unit. The most logical one that comes to mind is Chuge Nu. However, keep in mind that you have to balance this right, because if you build too many Chuge Nu, a Mongol player can just outboom you, head up into castle, and then all of a sudden, all you're achieving with this massive repeat across Bowman is making lances and other heavily armored units look like hedgehogs. And look at that, two additional spearmen, just so much value here for Kaposh. It allows him to get that second tower up behind the wood line, and you see, this is not something that Winchester could stop, because his villagers, they can't fight the spearmen, and the tower is too far away from the TC. This villager actually just wandering out there. Will take some damage, but get back to the safe TC spot. Most importantly though, the tower goes up. There is the reactionary Barbican, but I don't know what to think about this one. This is not a favorable spot overall for a Barbican. It might help you right now, but it's going to be very bad in the coming minutes. Yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> getting a little bit doubtful on what Vinchester wants to do here, because by covering the, the wood line, he's now exposed an easier target. Kapoch can block out the stone if he chooses by investing a villager over there. Alternatively, he can just rush up. Like, the delay this is now going to put onto Vinchester, considering he hasn't even gathered stone yet, means that by the time his TC is going up, Kapoch could be going up to tech free. And that's exactly it. Like, you see, the delay is immense. Winchester is yet to reach Song Dynasty, and if you take a look at Kaposh, he's already banking up resources for Castle Age. It's actually even worse for Winchester than it could possibly be if he wasn't this delayed. Because ideally, by now, you would have some level of eco lead at least, but he doesn't even have that. So Kaposh is going to beat him to Castle, beat him to the relics, while also maintaining an eco lead ahead of him. That is absolutely ginormous really i don't have words for this i mean this is a hill but he has a mountain to climb that's how you say it on this map specifically it does feel that way you can see how quickly it's going to be approaching also vinchester went in for this incredibly delayed archer range could have had it out much sooner considering what he done with it he's building archers so no chuge new coming out no big one up from going for this investment and also he's so slow to he realizes he can't even do anything with this maybe a little bit premature but vinchester frustrated by the state of affairs will wave that flag kapoch will take him down quickly to Oh, here to continue on in the first September weekly. Convincing set over here for Kaposh. He really is showing that he's a contender to qualify wow. to AoE 4 as well. Whereas for Vinch, as we talked about this one, he tried his luck over here. He could be a sneaky candidate to sneak into one of those spots. But for him right now, given how much time he has missed from AoE 4, 
he needs to treat this weekly event and even the coming two possibly as a boot camp because for him you get the feel the make or break is gonna be the last chance qualifiers not these weeklies his deficit seems a little too much to handle right now but he needs to use these weeklies to catch up with the meta clear his gameplay up and he's gonna have a chance possibly at the last chance qualifier.